We're not the only living things on this earth. Everyone is constantly moving, constantly going. We kind of have our blinders on. What they call the concrete jungle. And it overwhelms people. The city is intense. Parks and green spaces. Show people, you know, that we get to utilize the earth more. One with nature. Even though you may hear planes flying overhead. It creates communities. It's a way to escape the chaos that the city is. Il cielo è grande sopra la città e tutto abbraccia come il mare insieme a te il sole sorge per noi sì Today we're going to do some restoration work here at the shoreline. And as you start picking up stuff, check in on one another and see if we're ready to kind of move on to another section. Ideally, pie in the sky is that when you hear of in New York City, you think green. You know, where you see a building, you see green. Where you see a bike path, you see grass. That it's no longer, we're not, no longer isolated into these little patches where parks used to be, but that we're really integrated into the city. And that every New Yorker is fighting for their community to be greener. We're the big apple with a massive tree right behind it. My name is Anel Cabrera Morris, and I'm the Senior Director of Engagement and Programming for a New York Restoration Project. Reste encore, je veux respirer l'été accroché dans tes cheveux. New York Restoration Project was founded by Bette Midler to clean up neglected parks. She was driving past parks on the Upper West Side in Manhattan and just saw the profound neglect and literally pulled over her car, got out and started picking up garbage, started working with the Parks Department to identify parks that were in need of care, under-resourced, but had tremendous potentials. I think Sherman Creek, Swindler Cove has shown that dense urban spaces can be filled with life. To me, it suggests a, a, a more personal relationship with caring for the land. And this is one of the largest wetland complexes in Manhattan. Urban stewardship it, it, it's, don't always go together, but when you have a personal relationship with caring for public space or green space in the city, you think about the land holistically and do what you need to do to take care of it. From MRP's founding, we've been working with AmeriCorps and, and the program's central to our mission and our culture. My name is Sarah Tess Edwards, Julio, environmental educator. That kind of engagement with young people is critical to spreading the word for, for what we do. Well, I think that spaces like this really bring people together. It's a perfect spot right in the heart of the city that feels like it's not. Since I've been living in New York City, nature and the outdoors has taken a completely different meaning in my life. When you're in the city, you're not really connecting with the earth. Whoever preserved land to create parks had a lot of foresight as to what people would need. I'm Katarina Rivera. I'm a community organizer. So in the Cove is in East Inwood, and today is a beautiful park. In the last decade, it wasn't, it wasn't a place that people would come and gather and, and spend time in. It's absolutely amazing to see it today be a park with a community garden. So there's always kind of a lot of surprise and excitement to find that there's a green space that's so beautiful over here tucked away in this corner. This is the best place in Inwood. Yes, and I'm so proud, really. Being in a city with a lot of immigrants, and in a neighborhood especially, that has a lot of people who had access to land in their home country, there's such a change when you move to New York City. So I've had people come into the garden and feel that sense of home again. The garden in Swindler Cove can be a space that connects people to land that they feel they may have lost. I've also seen for the young people how exciting it can be. It's about letting those kids actually feel 
and see and explore places that oftentimes they only see in books. They get to see that there is so much beyond this concrete jungle. Does everybody see the tomatoes that are hiding in the garden bed? That there is so much nature that they can, you know, enjoy and that's here for them. It's not just, you know, about the restoration, but it's about bringing community in and showing them that they're a part of this, this they're part of this world, they're a part of nature. Well, the outdoors to me, I guess it's being, well, not in silence, but in this kind of unique silence where you're in your own thoughts and that you're kind of surrounded by natural things. You're surrounded by fresh air. You're surrounded by bugs. You're surrounded by yourself. They get to understand that they're a part of this bigger thing that is in their backyard. I mean, big picture, cities are growing. And so when we start to get stressed about all the problems and demands of the world, it's important to have a sense of possibility. I'm excited about the sense of possibility, about what we can achieve together. When you get back in nature, it, it's a really good fit. It makes all these other things possible. <laughs>